So Ram, you've had a different journey in terms of you've been one of the most successful surgeons in US in demand and operating every day. And then here you marry somebody who's super famous in India, don't even know who she is. And when you came back here, uh, you had an interesting transition while you still had many offers in India, which I know personally to run their hospitals or whatever. You said something very interesting about being able to touch only thousands when you do the surgery, but you know, touching millions through digital. Tell me a little bit about your own transformation and when you've been trained for something like this at the best of institutions, have done it for 20 years. How do you say this is the transition I'm going to have? Look, I'm Indian and I grew up from immigrant stock and my parents certainly weren't happy that I'm leaving the prototypical job of a heart surgeon and kind of every Indian's wet dream with, with like perfect sort of situations and lots of friends and the head of the hospital. But look, we've talked about this, that I could operate at most on three to five patients with open heart surgery and in a year, maybe 500 patients. And I had been a tech entrepreneur before with a software company at 14. And my folks said, look, the only way to move forward is to become a doctor engineer, what we often hear in India, even now. And um, to that, you know, I finally said, after 20 years in the business, I loved it. I was very rewarding. And to see patients leave the hospitals healthy and to interact with their families and make a difference in their lives was amazing. But when I looked at the planet, there were 7 billion people. And I said, what if you could take healthcare as it's traditionally practiced and then use a combination of media and technology to take it to the last mile and create digital frontiers where you'd put a doctor in everyone's pocket 24-7, 365 and align it with their health. Yeah. And in 2011, when I gave up my day job, as a practicing clinical heart surgeon, you can imagine yes. the responses. My partners were like, what are you doing? You know, we need you here. My, my uh, staff, you know, you, you almost have an 80 person team in heart surgery and they were devastated. But as they reconciled what I was thinking about in scaling what I did and taking it to billions of people, the responses were, were amazing that some of my patients were very well-to-do and they wanted to write me checks to create the startups. My parents initially weren't warm to this and then when they saw what I'd done with some of the startups, they wanted to write checks. And I said, look, you don't need to invest in me. I'm investing in you guys because I'm trying to build the next generation of healthcare using digital techniques. And back then in 2011, there were only 150 million internet users in India and only 50 million mobile connections. And we were trying to take it to the last mile then. We succeeded with the edutech that we created and the film company. And then the health tech was in stealth. And we were tremendously successful. But the satisfaction it got and the investments I made in various different things. And as you know, I scaled yeah. up to the investor side and to the family office to kind of take bets on a lot of people, mentor them and, and skill them and, and believe in them. Right. and use what I had been given to hopefully scale that. And what I saw was people actually thriving. And so I think the potential is vast. It's a green field, blue sky, bringing it to your title, the perils and possibilities of fame. I'm kind of the accidental Yankee in King Arthur's court and the incidental tourist, if you will, because yeah. my wife's the famous one. I'm just here for the ride. But other than the <laughs> imposter syndrome that all of us face on the spectrum, I, I think it's the power of one to make a difference in the lives of many. And don't ever estimate how powerful each one of you are in changing everything. And on the big stage, I spoke about investing in yourself. But at the same time, it's like the plane you fly on where they say, pull the mask on yourself before you put it on your child. Because if you don't protect yourself, how are you going to protect everyone around you, right? So what I decided to do was make a change for myself. And, you know, I, I think transformation would be the right word, but we had designed something for others to try to 
optimize their health. Because I saw a lot of lifestyle-acquired diseases, which Deepak has talked about, with consuming people. Yeah. And the sadness for me was that, I, from a selfish standpoint, I wanted my family and friends, which includes all of you guys, with me for 100 years. And not just 100 years, but 100 good years, right? 100 healthy years. Yes, and, and maybe much more than that, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's redefining age and reversal and longevity. And more than that, the happiness equation. Your structural intrinsic happiness, which you have to have, rather than the Instagrammable moment. So along that, we started looking at numbers. And, you know, in, in February, I was doing my usual yearly checkup. And I was in big trouble. I, I was, people were screaming at me because all my numbers were off. And they're like, Doc, what are you doing? You're the healthcare influencer. <laughs> How are you going to lead if you can't follow? And so I changed it around. And um, I don't know, about nine months, ten months ago, I switched it up. And I went vegan, stopped drinking. We went on uh, all kinds of transformations, testing it. And I was my own guinea pig. And I'd been testing it in hundreds of patients, was able to redefine many of the lifestyle diseases. My dad has been a diabetic for 55 years. We were able to take him off meds, turn him around. And he's now, he was 81 when we started that experiment. He's 86 now and doing very well. And so I said, why can't I do that on myself? So I did it. Along the way, we dropped 18 kilos. We went down to 16% body fat. And the thing is, we found it was reproducible. Yeah. And my hope is that with what we define using all the gadgets, feedback loops, and, you know, the idea of using fame to other people's benefit was what we were thinking about, that translating... I was at UCLA... I took care of a lot of celebrities even before I got married. And the only thing they wanted was anonymity. They wanted to put their pants on one leg at a time and not be addressed, right? Yeah. Now I'm facing the opposite, that everyone wants a selfie with me. I'm like, what do I do with this, you know? Yeah. And honestly, I, I want to have a conversation with them, and it becomes challenging. But to your point, I decided to intervene on myself. And I've, I've so far been pretty successful. We, our goal, our target is by my next birthday... I'm trying to get down to 12 to 15% body fat, and we're shooting for a magazine. And the idea is to lead by example and to be an ambassador for health. And from me, it never was about me. The YouTube channels were never about me. The Instagram was never about me. It was about all of you guys trying to redefine this so that I could right. build something and bring you along with me on the journey. And so I would say the perils and possibilities of health or of fame in my books, were to use this gift which we were given, both yeah. of us. And my wife and I and Deepak and you are very humble people. You'll never see us doing things for fame. That comes because you do something good and then the possibilities are limitless. But the idea is that if I can do something with this and save lives and lifestyles yeah. and bring people to happiness, then I've done my job. And this goes back to as a heart surgeon, I did it physically, now I'm sort of doing it mentally and physically and trying to scale yeah. my reach.